I've already talked about how important good documentation is. And for the Pokepedia, the Pokemon API that we're going to be working with in this section, they have fantastic documentation. So let's go over that really quick and make sure that we know how to do API calls, what items are available, and what makes documentation good as opposed to bad. So right off the bat, you can usually tell documentation is good when it is lengthy. You can see here that there is a lot of information here and a lot of examples, which is really the best thing you can hope for when you are doing API calls. You want a lot of examples to know exactly what you're supposed to be getting back. So to start off, they've got information about the API, fair use policy. They also have a Slack channel, which is great. So if you have any problems, you can hit them up. A lot of APIs don't have a Slack team or a way to communicate with them very officially or quickly. So this is also fantastic. They've got wrappers if you need to know uh, specific things about the way you are accessing it. And then they've got the resource lists. And these are all the different points of information that you can get with this Pokemon API. So they have pretty much everything you can need to know about Pokemon, as far as I know. I'm not an expert, but I've played a fair bit of the games, and I think they have everything here. So they cover berries and contests, encounters, evolution, games, items, machines, moves, locations, Pokemon, and utility. And when we look at one of these, we can see that this is how we get this information. They also say where they get a lot of this information from, like Bulbapedia, and that is also very useful. So they're pulling information from here, so if you ever need to go back and check things, you can definitely do that. And they are citing their sources, which is fantastic. So this is a GET request. This is the API that they're using, version 2, and you type in slash berry, and then you give it an ID or a name. So every single berry they have is going to have an ID. So if you want to specifically search for a berry, you can put in the name if you know it, but you also want to make sure that you know what the name is, because the name might not be what you expect it to be. So they have here, the name for this is actually the cherry berry. So let's copy this open home in a new tab and let's say we want to search for berry slash cherry berry if we submit that we're getting a 404 error that's not the actual name that's not how we're supposed to be doing it so let's cancel that and do a submit and now that is what we need to be using is just cherry so the name that we want is right there and you want to make sure that you are putting in the right information. And this information is actually in the order that it appears, which is super useful. So you come down here and you've got everything you need to know about this berry. And if you want to know more, if you want to access more information about it, they give you the URL, which is the API call to get more information about that. So here's spicy. If you want to know more about the spicy flavor, You've got this API call to do, which if we copy and paste, we'll get back uh, the JSON in the not pretty format. But you can see here that it gives us that information all about the spicy berry and everything that we need to know about it. And it also has the URLs to images about the spicy berry. So that is how you use this documentation. And the important thing to know is that every single API doc docs is going to look different. And that's why we're going to be doing three different documentation examples and three different APIs because each one is going to be vastly different. This one is really good. It covers pretty much everything you need to know and it has numerous examples for every single kind of thing that you need, which I love. So it makes things simple, it makes things easy, and it has docs for all of it, which is fantastic. So it also has the data types that you're getting back, descriptions, and the names of what it is. So that covers the documentation for Pokemon. Now, what we're going to be doing next is actually start using it. So I've already shown you how to use Postman with this. So we're going to jump into Visual Studio, and I'm going to show you how to set up a web request to this API and start getting information back.